Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In today's video, we're going to take a look at TIPS versus I-bonds. TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, and I-bonds. They're both bonds that help us hedge the risk of inflation, but they're very, very different from one another. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to start with the sim similarities. We're going to look at five ways uh, in which they're, they're very similar. Then we're going to look at, at eight ways they're different. And the differences are really important to understand. And then we're going to finish up. I'm going to walk through a couple of my own thoughts on the differences and how I'm using or not using them in my own portfolio. And then as a bonus tip at the end, I'm going to talk about how we can use one of them if we want to, to help save for a child's education. There are some tax advantages built into one of them. So let's get started. And uh, with the similarities, number one is they're both bonds issued by the U.S. government. So that means there's effectively no well, what's called credit risk. That is risk of default, or at least it's about the safest thing we have access to today. So they're both issued by the U.S. government. That's the first thing. Uh, the second similarity is they do both hedge or protect us against un unexpected increases in inflation. That's kind of the reason we might want to invest in either a TIPS or an I-bond. They protect us uh, from inflation. Now, as we'll see in a minute, they protect us in different ways, but they do both hedge against inflation. And uh, the third thing, and related to that, is they both use the consumer price index, technically the CPI for all urban consumers, the CPI-U. Uh, that's the index they use for their adjustments based on inflation. Again, we'll look at that in a little more detail in just a minute. Um, uh, the fourth similarity is they both can be purchased through Treasury Direct. Let me just show you that briefly. Treasury Direct is a, the part of the federal government. It's a federal government website, treasurydirect.gov. We'll look at it again in just a minute. But you can purchase both TIPS and I-bonds directly from the federal government through Treasury uh, Direct. It's not the only way you can buy TIPS, as we'll see in a minute, but you can, you can buy them both uh, through Treasury Direct. And then the, the fifth similarity is they're both exempt uh, from state and local taxes. So they have a tax benefit as well. When you get your interest payments, as small as they may be, they are exempt from state and local taxes. So those are five similarities. Let's go right to the differences because that's really where uh, some important things uh, come to light. The first is how we buy. Now I mentioned just a minute ago, you can buy them both through Treasury Direct, but here's the deal. That's effectively the only way to buy I-bonds. You can't uh, buy I-bonds through, say, an ETF or a mutual fund. They're not sold on what's called the secondary market. You have to buy them directly from the federal government. TIPS, on the other hand, are traded on the secondary market. And so you can, for example, invest in an ETF, a TIPS ETF or mutual fund. Vanguard offers them. Most of the major mutual fund uh, companies uh, offer them. So in that sense, TIPS are, frankly, a little easier uh, to buy uh, than I-bonds, um, and that has some implications, as we'll see in just a minute. Now, related to that, the second difference is the purchase limits. When you buy an I-bond, uh, you're limited to $10,000 in I-bonds a year when you buy them directly through Treasury Direct. You know, if you're married, both spouses can, can buy $10,000 in I-bonds, but, but you're limited in that regard. Now, you can boost that a little bit. If you get a refund each year, you can use up to $5,000 of your refund to buy I-bonds as well. So I guess that would bring your total to $15,000. But the key really is that with I-bonds, there is a limit uh, to how much you can buy each year. With TIPS, as a practical matter for you and I, there's really no limit at all. Technically, if you're an institutional uh, buyer, there are going to be limits. Uh, but for you and I, as a practical matter, you can buy you know, as, as much in the way of tips uh, as you want. So that's the second uh, important difference. The third difference is how the two adjust for uh, inflation. And um, let's start with I-bonds. What I-bonds do is they have sort of, you can think of it as two interest rates. They have what they call a fixed rate, and then they have what's called an inflation rate. The fixed rate is determined when you buy uh, the bond, and it's um, it stays the same, just as you would think, fixed, it doesn't change. So uh, uh, right now, the fixed rate on an I-bond, and let me show you, this may or may not surprise you, it is 0%. We can go all the way up to, here we go, May of 2021. As you can see, they set this every six months in May and November. The fixed rate 
is 0%. Now that doesn't sound very good, uh, but now we have to look at the inflation rate. This too adjusts every six months uh, based on the CPI. And we can see that currently it's 1.77%. That's the six month rate. So if it stays the same in November, you would effectively double that to what? 3.54%. And to calculate your, your, your interest rate on an I bond, you add the fixed rate to the inflation rate. So effectively on an annual basis, as I record this video, uh, I bonds are paying just over three and a half percent. But again, come November, uh, depending on what the CPI does, uh, that inflation rate could go up or down. You can see over a number of years, as you look on the screen here, uh, the rates have varied. They can even be negative. That is a, a possibility, but we'll come back to that. That's just uh, the inflation rate. And I will leave a link to this page uh, below the video. Now, uh, with uh, tips, it kind of is the opposite. They don't actually change the interest rate. What they do is they adjust the principal balance that the interest rate is applied to. So if there's inflation, the principal balance gets increased, and then whatever the, the uh, rate is, it gets applied to that increased balance. If there happens to be deflation, and there is from time to time, the principal balance goes uh, down, and that's how they adjust for inflation. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that with a tip, although the principal balance can go up and down with inflation and deflation, when the bond matures, you'll never get less than the face amount of the bond. So even if there's deflation, every year you own the, uh, the tip's bond, uh, you'll never get back less than you put in. So that, that's good. But you have to understand with tips, they adjust for inflation by adjusting the principal balance. All right. Related to all that is the fourth difference, and that's the interest rates. And I want to go back uh, to this tab here. And you saw, saw where we have this fixed rate of 0% currently. Here it is. And we have the current inflation rate of 1.77. But if you come down here, you'll notice some negative rates. Uh, this was back in May, May 1st of 2015. So here's the deal with I bonds. You'll take the fixed rate and you'll add it to the inflation rate and whatever that amount is, that's your, your rate for the next six months. However, I bonds will never go negative. If the inflation rate is negative and the fixed rate is zero, the interest rate applied for that next six month period will just be zero. Interest rates for I bonds never go below zero with tips. The rates can and do and currently are negative. And let me just show you an example of that. This is a Vanguard short term. You can see it here, Inflation Protected Securities Index Fund. This is TIPS. They, again, remember, they can be bought inside an ETF for a mutual fund, and that's good. But if we go down here and we look at what's called the SEC yield right here, it's the, 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 uh, basically the income that the fund paid over the 30-day period ending, um, uh, I guess, as of July 29th. You can see right here, it's negative, a negative 2.44%. So tips, the yields, the, the, the interest on them can go negative. That's an important thing to keep in mind. We'll come back to it as a matter of fact. Now, the fifth difference uh, has to do with taxes. With an I bond, you can defer the taxes until either the bond matures or you decide to redeem and, and, and sell your bond back to the U.S. government. You can defer the taxes until then if you want to. With tips, you can't. Interest and principal adjustments are taxed annually, which as a general rule makes tips more ideal for tax advantaged accounts than taxable accounts. So that's a fifth difference to keep in mind. And that brings us to number six, and that's the maturity. I bonds have one maturity, one length, and it's 30 years. You can't buy a 10 year I bond. They're all 30 years. With tips, five, 10, or 30-year uh, uh, maturity. So you have, you have some choices. And for that reason, you'll often see funds or ETFs that are either short-term tips or intermediate or long-term tips. Uh, so you have some flexibility there, but with I-bonds, it's just 30 years. All right, uh, number seven, there are some penalties and restrictions if you try to sell an I-bond that we need to know about. So first of all, you cannot redeem an I-bond for the first 12 months. The government won't buy it back from you. Invest in an I bond, you're stuck with it for 12 months. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is, after the 12 months, if you sell it, you're going to pay a three month a penalty worth three months worth of interest until you've waited a full five years. After five years, you can sell it without penalty. But if you sell it before five years, 
you're going to get a penalty of three months interest. So that's something to keep in mind. In some ways, it makes it similar to the penalty for a certificate uh, of deposit. I personally, given the current interest rates that you're getting on an I-bond, that three-month penalty doesn't concern me too much because it's still clobbering uh, what you can earn, say, on a savings account. But it's important and it's something uh, to keep in mind as you're making uh, your own decisions on how to invest your money. With tips, you know, there are no similar penalties. You can buy and sell tips on the secondary market. There are no restrictions like there are with I-bonds. Now, the eighth and final difference is that, as you may know, particularly if you watch my Bonds 101 uh, video, as interest rates rise and fall, the value of existing bonds go in the opposite direction. So if interest rates go up, the value of an existing bond would go down. If interest rates go down, the value of an ex existing bond goes up. However, with I-bonds, remember, you can't sell them or buy them you know, in the open market. You can only exchange with the federal government, and the value of the bond basically stays the same. If you, you want to sell your bond, your I-bond, back to the government, you want to redeem it, they're going to give you the face value. It doesn't matter if interest rates have gone up or down. You're going to get whatever the value of the bond is. If you own tips and you sell them, the actual value, there could be, they could be selling at a premium or a discount. So, for example, if you think interest rates are going to fall, it's kind of hard to believe <laughs> in the current market they would do that, but, you know, I've been surprised before on interest rates. So if they fell, the value of an existing uh, bond, any bond really, but tips would go up. So that's something to keep in mind. Tips values will change as interest rates change. Value of an I bond won't. So those are the eight differences. They're pretty significant. And now what does that all mean? How should we think about all of those differences as we try to think about our own portfolios? So a few things to keep in mind. When it comes to just asset allocation, if you want to allocate something to an inflation protected bond, something that's going to hedge against inflation, I think as a practical matter, tips are probably the answer because they can be bought and sold through ETFs and mutual funds. If you have a portfolio of any size and you want to allocate 10, 20%, whatever it might be, to an inflation protected bond, it's going to be really hard to do that with I bonds given that you have to buy them directly from the government and there are limits on how much you can buy each year. Tips are just much, much uh, easier. Having said that, I personally have moved out of tips. I've owned them in the past. I just can't stomach the negative rates. Yes, I like the idea of having investments that hedge uh, against inflation, but it seems to me an awfully expensive uh, price to pay for that inflation protection. And from my perspective, stocks uh, are a pretty decent hedge against inflation, not in the short term. In the short term, inflation and, and, and higher interest rates will clobber stocks. But over the long term, stocks... Uh, have historically anyway, significantly outperformed inflation. So I'm just not a big believer in investing in tips today, given the negative yields. Now, uh, with I-bonds, can they serve as an emergency fund? Well, again, you've got to be able to get over that limit on selling them for 12 months. If you can deal with that and how you structure your finances, then probably not a, a bad alternative, although frankly, a savings account is probably just an easier way to go. Having said that, I do own a little bit in I-bonds and I do plan to buy more this year, both for me and my wife. We're gonna buy the, the limit of $10,000 because I think the rates are just really good right now. And um, I do suspect in November, the result will be pretty solid rates as well, although I guess we'll see. So I do have some I-bonds in my portfolio and I am uh, increasing that this year. Although then uh, again, Given the limits on how much I can buy, uh, it's a really, really small fraction of our overall portfolio, but such is life. Uh, there here you go. Now, I did promise you a bonus tip, and that comes to uh, the question of education. It turns out there are some tax benefits if you use I-bonds uh, to pay for education. This does not apply to tips, and let me show you, and again, I'll leave a link to what I'm showing you below the video. This is a page from Treasury Direct, uh, and it walks through how you can use I-bonds to pay for education and avoid taxes uh, on the interest. Now, there are a number of, of sort of hoops you have to jump through. They're all right here. Some of them may, may surprise you. For example, this one. One of the qualifications is that you were 24 or older before your savings bond uh, was issued. And you have to use the proceeds of the bond for, for education expenses for either yourself, your spouse, 
or your dependents. And as you can see, there are other requirements as well. So before you make any decisions, it's really important that you understand what these requirements are uh, and that you meet them. But I wanted to point that out. I bonds can be an effective part of a broader a plan to pay for a child's education. So there you go. We've got the similarities and the differences and some strategies when it comes to tips versus I bonds. If you have any questions or comments, leave them uh, below the video. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.